The New Testament is one of the most important documents in Christianity, recounting the life of Jesus and much of the early church. There's a lot of familiar stories, baby Jesus in a manger, miracles, crucifixion, the empty tomb, angels and demons, and something about the end of the world. And while the New Testament isn't always chronological, it's laid out in a few distinct sections. The life of Jesus, the beginning of the church, a whole bunch of letters, and then finally the book of Revelation. In this video, we're going to quickly walk through the entire New Testament, focusing mostly on historical events. I made a similar video a few years ago on the Old Testament, and if you've seen that, you'll know that there's a limit to how much detail can be made into a video, uh, like a quick overview like this. This is just that, a flyby overview. It all begins with Jesus. Dear tiny Jesus, your golden fleece diapers. No, not like baby Jesus, but Jesus in the beginning Jesus. Makes sense, right? John says that Jesus actually existed before all things, that he is the creator of everything, that he is actually God. Let's just say that this is a pretty bold claim. But everything that is said from that point on is going to be the New Testament's attempt to prove John's claim that Jesus is God come to rescue humanity from sin. Fast forward to somewhere around 6 BC, an angel Gabriel appears to two people. One, an old man named Zechariah, and two, a young woman named Mary. And we know that they are, well, it just tells us they're kin, which means they're probably cousins or something. To Zechariah, the angel said that he would have a son named John, and to Mary, she would have a son named Jesus. Zechariah's wife Elizabeth, though she was barren and could not have children, miraculously conceived and gave birth to a boy named John. Mary, though she had not yet been with a man, miraculously conceived and gave birth to a boy named Jesus. Shortly thereafter, some wise men come, they give gifts to Jesus, it includes gold, frankincense, and myrrh, you know, the classic Jewish baby shower gifts. Some angels show up, uh, they start singing a bunch of songs about peace on earth, and then this little drummer boy wakes up the whole neighborhood, uh, he's just banging on his little drum in the middle of midnight, just your average birth story around Jerusalem. Mary and Joseph, they took Jesus and they fled to Egypt because Herod, who was the governing ruler, well, he heard this story about a king who was born, and he ordered that all of the kids in the area be killed so that no king could rise up against him. Eventually, the family returns back from Egypt, and Jesus grew up in a small town called Nazareth. Now, apart from one story when Jesus was in the temple, the New Testament is pretty much silent about Jesus until he's an adult. And many scholars believe that he was around age 30 when the story picks up. John the Baptist, that's Elizabeth's son John, he begins a ministry calling everyone to repent and be baptized because the Messiah, or Savior, is coming. Spoiler alert, he's talking about Jesus. Well, Jesus shows up, John baptizes him, and then Jesus goes into the desert where Satan tempts him, but Jesus was all like... <laughs> then Jesus begins his ministry, and he starts by going around and collecting a group of 12 men who would soon be known as his disciples. As he's going around Israel, he teaches the crowds, he helps the poor, he heals the sick, he cast, casts out demons, and he does many other miracles. His most famous teaching being what is called the Sermon on the Mount. The crowds, they love him and they're listening to his claims and all this stuff about him being the Messiah. And for three years, Jesus continues his ministry just like normal. Because of this, the religious leaders called Pharisees get jealous and start plotting against him. Eventually, one of Jesus' disciples, Judas, betrays Jesus to the authorities for money, and Jesus is arrested. The Romans, under political pressure, agreed to crucify Jesus, and there, hanging on a cross, Jesus bled and died. But hang on, didn't, didn't John at the beginning say that Jesus was God? That's exactly what his followers were asking. But three days after Jesus had been buried in a tomb, a few women went to tend his body. That was the Jewish tradition at the time, but instead of finding a body, the Gospels say that the tomb was empty and Jesus was alive, and that he spoke with the women and later his disciples. Terrified and amazed, they fell down and worshipped him. Now alive and well, raised from the dead, Jesus told his disciples that he would be leaving soon, but that they would need to go into all the world to make more disciples, and that he would send his spirit to help them. That is how the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John conclude. 
at this point we're somewhere around 30 AD. And this is where the book of Acts, which was also written by Luke, picks up where he left off. Jesus pieces out and his disciples try to figure out what they're supposed to do next. So they pick a new disciple to replace Judas, who had at this point hung himself in remorse, and then they wait in Jerusalem. On Pentecost, which is a Jewish holiday, Jesus sends his spirit to empower his disciples. So they speak with boldness, uh, and thousands at the temple heard the message and believed that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Savior. From that point forward, the disciples started ministering in the same way that Jesus did. They go all around Israel, teaching crowds, helping the poor, healing the sick, casting out demons, and many other miracles. The Pharisees also started what they do best, plotting. They start getting the disciples arrested, beaten, and attempted to silence them, but the disciples simply refused to be silent about what they'd seen. Eventually, the tension escalates, and Stephen becomes the first person to be martyred for his faith in Christ. Because of this persecution, the church scatters and continues to grow everywhere that it goes. One of the main proponents of this persecution was a Pharisee named Paul. A few years pass, and in 34 AD, Paul travels to a city called Damascus, and on the road, he has this vision of Jesus, and he repents of his persecution, and he instead believes that Jesus is the resurrected Christ. In a dramatic change of heart, Paul joins the church he previously tried to destroy, and he begins spreading the good news to all who would listen. Over the next decade, the church continued to grow, and somewhere in this time period, the book of James is written to encourage the new Jewish converts to continue growing in their faith. While Christianity began in Jerusalem, almost exclusively among the Jews, the message quickly began spreading, even to those who were not of Jewish lineage. A meeting known as the Jerusalem Council was held by many of the leaders of the Christian movement to discuss what God was doing since they had always believed that the Jews alone were God's people. They concluded that Jesus died to bring all people, both Jews and Gentiles, that is, those who are not Jewish, into a restored relationship with God through faith. It's around this time and over the next decade that Paul went on three different missionary journeys, spreading the gospel everywhere that he went. His first journey kept him kind of in the, the northeast corner of the Mediterranean, going city to city, spreading the news of the gospel. His second journey, after the Jerusalem Council, started in Antioch, and it, it went north and wrapped around Syria through Galatia, uh, Asia Minor, Thrace, Macedonia, and then it went all the way back to Jerusalem. The third followed a similar path as he went back to visit many of the churches that he'd previously started. During these years, he wrote many letters, the letters of 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, and Romans, uh, which were all to some of the churches that he had started throughout his missionary journeys. Around 60 AD, Paul returns to Jerusalem and is arrested due to, well, you guessed it, the Pharisees' influence over the government. Paul goes to court and he ends up getting deported to Rome where he awaits trial under house arrest. He's finally reached the epicenter of the known world, the heart of the Roman Empire. While all this is going on, in another part of the world, the Apostle Peter wrote his first letter. Back to Paul in Rome. While in prison, he writes the letters to the Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, a letter to Titus, two letters to Timothy, and it's not in the Bible, but tradition tells us that it's in 67 AD that Paul is beheaded for his faith. Following Paul's death comes 2 Peter, Hebrews, and Jude, and from 90 to 95 AD, John wrote 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John and the book of Revelation in that order as an encouragement to the church to continue trusting in God. And that one day, Jesus will return to conquer his enemies and reign as king over all. So this concludes the story of the New Testament. And over the next thousands of years, the church has continued to grow and spread that same story that Jesus is God. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some of our other videos as well as liking and subscribing to this channel so that you can continue to learn more and more about what Christians believe.